jail cells like these aren't as crowded as they used to be since bail reform was put into effect in 2020. Fairness is the key here. New York State enacted bail reform legislation to make sure people who are economically disadvantaged were not being held on bail for nonviolent crimes. Erie County District Attorney John Flynn says the legislation eliminated the need for people to pay bail on most misdemeanors. They came up with a rule that said that all misdemeanors, which would include like stealing a candy bar, uh, all misdemeanors and some nonviolent felonies that judges can no longer put bail on someone. Since bail reform took effect, critics have had many issues with it. Bail brings people back to court. That's why it's there. Robert Orr is the New York State Senate Minority Leader. He has a number of issues with bail reform. We've seen uh, an increase in recidivism, which is repeat offenses. Uh, we've seen an increase in violent crime across the state. Um, and we've seen people who otherwise would have been able to be held for gun charges, for assaults, uh, for robberies, for theft, especially if they were repeat offenders, uh, they can no longer be held. Dean Paleo is the Alma Town Justice and also advises other town judges in his district. He says that the idea behind bail is to ensure that defendants come back to court. And the problem is, it's not a problem, but there's no con minor consequences. So for just stealing a car, if you're 16 or 17, you brought in your parents' ticket, you go home. And you could do that two times, three times, four times, and you just keep going home. D.A. Flynn says that he would like to see some changes to allow judges to consider public safety when deciding to set bail. The only state in the country where public safety is not a factor in setting bail. Uh, every other state in the country has some form of public safety that the judge can put in their mind. Governor Kathy Hochul acknowledges that there are some shortcomings with the bail reform legislation and she is proposing changes to the bail reform process. There is an inconsistency in our law right now. That's what I'm striving to fix with respect to the least restrictive means in particular. So there have been very productive conversations in this room, uh, many meetings as recently as yesterday, and you know, re regular conversation about how we meet our mutual objectives of protecting public safety. Lawmakers continue to negotiate changes to bail reform as part of the ongoing state budget talks. Once a decision is reached, we will have more information on our website at BroadcastingBuffalo.com. For Broadcasting Buffalo, I'm Alessia Gervasi. Dozens of dogs around Western New York are looking for their forever homes. Many are rescued from other parts of the country. Typically, we get all of our dogs from Ohio. Volunteers from Buffalo Pug and Small Breed Rescue travel to Ohio twice a week to rescue dogs from breeders who are done using them. These dogs are coming from um, crates you know, living in um, a very cold barn. They don't know a house. They don't know a touch, um, what love is. So it, it is, it's a lot of work, um, but in the end, you're saving a dog. They're going to a new home and um, they're making a family very happy. The organization is always looking for more volunteers and donations. Right now, they have about 45 dogs in rescue. The dogs stay with foster families until they can be spayed or neutered, vetted for health, and adopted out. Stevie was just spayed on Thursday, and she'll be with me for two weeks while she reco uh, recovers, and then we get their stitches, her stitches out, and then she'll go to her new family, who she's already met. We found their application. We called them. They met her, and they're waiting patiently for her. Another local rescue, Diamonds in the Rough, also places dogs with foster homes, Derek and Mullane, Coco Tylo, take up to four foster dogs at a time. They highly recommend people open their homes to dogs in need. Do it. It's the most rewarding thing in the world. Uh, you make friends for life through the rescues you work with. You bond with animals for life. Um, the hardest thing is, you know, adopting them out sometimes, but it's also the most rewarding thing. Several local organizations also rescue dogs at risk of being euthanized from shelters in other states. East Coast Paws has a number of volunteers who drive to pick up the dogs and bring them to Western New York to find permanent homes. The fact that I can help get them someplace to have a better life means a lot. 
For more information about adopting pets, visit BroadcastingBuffalo.com. I'm Tana Wanda. I'm Kelly Ackerman. After a disappointing end to the season, Bills fans are eager to see what the team does next. As free agency slowly winds down, the team now shifts their focus to the NFL draft. The Bills are still currently in place to contend at a serious level. However, several positions will need to be addressed in this year's draft. Many mock experts have the team targeting an offensive lineman, a wide receiver, or a linebacker with their first pick. The team has done research on several players that will fit their needs at pick number 27. Here are some players to keep an eye on with their first pick. Iowa linebacker Jack Campbell is a popular name being mocked to the Bills at number 27. He enjoyed a highly successful college career, winning multiple awards such as the William V. Campbell Award and the Dick Buckus Award. With similar measurables to former Bills linebacker Tremaine Edmonds, Campbell could be a smart pick to fill the void at middle linebacker. TCU wide receiver Quentin Johnston is also a possible target for the Bills with their first pick. Johnston was a crucial part of TCU's passing offense this past season, helping his team make it all the way to the national championship game. His 6'3 frame and ability after the catch could make him an attractive candidate for the Bills. Darnell Wright is widely considered one of the few premier offensive tackles in this year's draft. His play at Tennessee against top-notch competition earned him a selection on the first-team All-SEC team. Wright can come in and likely be a day-one starter at right tackle for the Bills. Iowa State edge rusher Will McDonald is a refined and accomplished player. He specializes in getting after the quarterback, and that's exactly what the Bills may need with Von Miller's return date up in the air. We spoke to a few Bills fans to learn what Bills Mafia wants with the Bills' first pick. Andrew Forsyth wants the team to beef up their offensive line to protect quarterback Josh Allen. I mean, just look at the Bengals game. They were rushing three or four all game, and they were getting pressure the entire time. You can't win a Super Bowl with a low average O-line. It has to be at least decent. Tommy Zolnowski believes the team should add a receiver in the first round to alleviate some of the pressure off of Stefan Diggs. Diggs is an elite wide receiver, so we need another one to completely spread out the field and make teams not be able to double one. I say that because if you look at the layout of the AFC, every team seems to be building around two-star wide receivers. You have the Dolphins with Waddle and Hill, you have the Bengals with Chase and Higgins. Jack Cruiser wants the team to find the Tremaine Edmonds replacement with a linebacker in the first round. Well, the Bills got to replace Tremaine Edmonds. That's the biggest hole on their roster right now. Um, who's going to play next to Matt Milano? Who's going to fit well with Matt Milano? If they go first round with middle linebacker, I think that's the position that's most at need to fill that hole, at least right now. For more information on some of the top prospects from the 2023 NFL Draft, you can check out our website at broadcastingbuffalo.com. For Broadcast in Buffalo, I'm Justin C.J. The New York State Thruway Authority has announced its first site-wide toll increase since 2010. But given the removal of traditional toll booths and their operators, as well as the transition to cashless tolling, has people wondering why? The increase is expected to begin in January of 2024, starting at 5% for EasyPass tag holders and up to 75% for non-tag holders. Ronald Kozak, former toll booth operator and secretary treasurer of the Teamsters Local 72 Union, says he was directly affected by the switch to cashless tolling, which resulted in the termination of his employment after almost 30 years. They were dissolving our jobs to go for all easy pass statewide. Kozak says the money being saved on salaries and toll booth upkeep should have helped, not hindered, their budget. New York State Thruway Authority's Director of Media Relations, Jennifer Givner, says employees were given a three-year notice of the transition, but saving money was not the intention. It was a very well thought out, carefully crafted plan to work with all of our employees impacted so that we could ensure they had numerous opportunities following the conversion to cashless. Kozak also says, the Thruway Authority receives more than enough revenue from other sources, such as the leasing out of their fiber optic network, the leasing out of rest areas, and receiving funds from FEMA for snow removal services, as recently as the November storm. However, Givner says this isn't the case. We do not receive federal, state, or local tax dollars in any form. The only revenue that we collect, that we that we have, that we can invest into our roadway, 570 miles, is based on toll revenue. Kozak says there are many problems with the EasyPass system. 
One of these problems is the Thruway Authority's inability to enforce the payment of tolls by mail for residents outside of New York. The process is we issue you a violation. Um, if you do not pay that over several times, then we send you to collections. Givner says the increase is largely needed for infrastructure and is a 10-year financial trajectory, which is upwards of hundreds of millions of dollars. We have more than 800 bridges under our jurisdiction. 75% of those bridges are 55 years or older. New York citizens will be able to attend public hearings regarding this increase over the next year. You can keep an eye out for important dates and additional information by visiting our website. For Broadcasting Buffalo, I'm Angela Keiko.